Alrighty, Rocketeers, this is a how to swim video for beginners in which you'll learn how to tread water, how to stand up after swimming horizontally, how to float, and how to breathe. The first drill I'll teach you is how to tread water. When you're treading water out in the ocean or in a lake or in a pool, I just want to remind you that you should always have a lifeguard present or a coach or an instructor, someone who knows lifeguard and CPR training that can help rescue you. Whenever you're practicing anything in the water in general, I recommend that as well. But the reason I strongly suggest that on treading water is because treading water is not efficient. It's exhausting and it can be dangerous if you're not a good swimmer. Just remember the buddy system, okay? There are two components to treading water, your arms and your legs. The arms are sculling water or redirecting it downwards. Think of it as like frosting a cake with your hands or directing a choir. You're gonna press the water side of your hands and then redirect it back in the middle. Press it to the side, redirect it back to the middle, over and over again. If you do it long enough, you might even be able to form a whirlpool over your forearm like this. Now the most common mistake beginners make with their arms at this step is spreading them out too wide. Keep them kind of close to your body. Keep your elbows bent. You don't want them straight out like this. And really small movements with your hands, okay? Don't cover a lot of ground. Smaller movements with your hands are a little easier to maintain. The second part of treading water are your legs. Now your legs do an egg beater kick. An egg beater kick is like a breaststroke kick, but one leg at a time. You're redirecting water downwards with the inside of your shins and your calves and your ankles, okay? So watch my legs underwater and see how I trap the water with the inside of my legs and press it down to the bottom of the pool. I'm also hinging on my hips and my knees. I'm pressing my knee down first, following with my ankle, creating a whip under the water. At this step, it's also important to keep your knees into your chest or kind of near your belly, thighs near your belly. If your legs are too far away from your body during this step, you might find yourself sinking because your body is vertical in the water. And when you're vertical, all your weight is going straight down. So if you're able to ball yourself up a little bit, it'll allow more of your weight to concentrate in your core and not be spread out so much throughout the rest of your body, sinking you. So keep your knees close to your chest or close to your belly. Keep your hands also close to your body. And then the last tip I have for you with treading water is to slightly lean forward. Get your hips behind you a little bit and lean forward. It makes it a lot easier. If you're trying to stand straight up and down, already I've had to start kicking harder just since changing my position. This is harder for me to do. I will not last very long. If I'm slightly angled with my face forward and my hips back, it's a lot easier for me to tread water for a longer period of time because I have more surface area spread out in the water. So remember, when you're treading water, the three key elements are small hand movements, redirecting water downwards, legs close to your body as you kick the water with the inside of your shins, and lean slightly forward, and you'll be treading water. All right, now let's move on to the second drill, which is how to stand up after you've been swimming horizontally, either on your back or on your belly. When you're on your back, the best thing you can do is sit up in the water, kind of like you're sitting up in bed. Drop your hips underneath your belly, bring your knees to your chest, and pick your head up. I'll show you, watch this. Pick your head up in the water, sink your hips, and draw your knees to your chest. Once you're here, you'll find that you can just place your feet right down on the ground. I'll show you again. You can be floating on your back, lift your head, bring your hips underneath your belly, and draw your knees to your chest. You might also redirect the water downwards with your hands, that will help. If you redirect the water downwards with your hands, that will also help you get up without any water splashing over your face. So I'll redirect water downwards with my hands. I'm gonna pick my head up, sink my hips underneath my belly and draw my knees to my chest. Then you just place your feet flat on the ground. From your belly, what you'll wanna do is draw your knees into your chest first, then lift your head. 
So the order is a little bit different. Draw your knees to your chest first, then lift your head and press down on the water with your hands. Okay? Now, I also recommend that you do this with your hands out in front to start, not behind you. So I'll show you, floating in the water, on my belly, hands out in front, I'm gonna draw my knees to my chest first, then lift my head. From here, I'll stand up and place my feet flat on the ground. I'll show you again. Draw your knees to your chest, then lift your head up and place your feet flat on the ground. Moving on to floating for survival and relaxation purposes. We're gonna learn how to float on our back and on our stomach. Most of the times, beginners have a hard time floating because they, they think their legs are sinking and that's not floating. Well, it's okay if your legs sink a little bit. Your legs are heavier muscles. They're going to sink naturally in the water. I'll teach you how to keep them up in this video. First thing you do when you're floating on your back is make sure you have lungs full of air. Without your lungs full of air, it's gonna be harder for you to stay up. Your lungs inside your chest act like air balloons, keeping you up at the surface of the water. So take a super deep breath, max your lungs out with air, and then release. When you're on your back, you're not gonna to wanna to release all the way out. You're only gonna to wanna to release about halfway out and then refill the tank. Let it out about halfway, refill the tank. Watch me. I'm on my back. I'm gonna take a deep breath in. Watch my body rise. Now I'm gonna blow it all out and you're gonna watch me sink. I need to keep my air in my lungs for me to stay up. So this time I'll only blow out about halfway. Watch. Take a deep breath in. Body rises. I'm gonna let it out about halfway. Now I'll hold it here. You'll notice I don't go underwater, but you're not gonna wanna hold it halfway out. You're gonna wanna breathe it back in. Body comes back up. Let it out about halfway. Breathe it back in. Now you don't have to be as aggressive with your breaths as I'm being for dra dramatization so you can hear it and see it. But when I'm on my back, I wanna be relaxed, okay? So it'll look a lot like this once you've mastered it. As you can see, my face stays dry, my nose, my mouth stays dry. Maybe the water is above my ears, but that's okay. If you get a little tickle in your, in your ears and that's uncomfortable for you, you might try putting your face straight down in the water first, because when you come up with your face down, the water usually spills out of your ears and doesn't feel so comfortable. Once you're more used to that feeling, then resume your practice and your training for the backflow. All right, now at this point, you may have been seeing my hands and my feet moving underwater a little bit, maybe fluttering. That's because now we're gonna learn how to keep your legs up. When I said earlier that it's very difficult to keep your legs up without moving in the water, that's because objects in motion tend to stay in motion. So if you're moving in the water, that momentum will rise you to the surface of the water and keep you there if you keep moving. Once you stop moving, your body's going to sink down below the surface again. So keep your momentum going. Watch me. When I'm on my back, if I don't kick at all, my legs will sink. But if I kick my feet just so lightly that they stay up, I'm not exerting much effort, and I could do this for as long as it takes. All you're doing is fluttering your feet very lightly to redirect water downwards, keeping your feet and your hips upwards, okay? So, watch again. This time, I'm gonna move it a little bit faster. I'm gonna move a little bit quicker pace because that's gonna keep my feet and my legs up even higher. Now, once you're good at that, you can really get your feet moving and you'll make a lot of progress. And that's a great place to start training. If you wanna do laps in the water someday, that's a great place to start, is kicking on your back where you can breathe and you're comfortable in the water and nothing feels uh, overwhelming for you, okay? now. My hands are doing something similar. My hands are also kind of fluttering in the water. I'm waving goodbye to my feet just to redirect water downwards and backwards, keeping my body up. Because all the people out there on my channel that comment saying, oh, I'm too muscular, or my friend's too muscular, my, my husband's too muscular, 
it's okay. You can be a muscular person and float. You're just need, gonna need to keep moving more. You're gonna need more momentum than anybody else. But it's possible. So my hands are going to be redirecting water back down to my feet. You don't need to splash. In fact, the higher your hands are in the water, the more you'll sink, okay? You don't want your hands high in the water. You want them barely underneath the surface. If they splash a little bit, that's okay. But you're waving goodbye to your feet, redirecting water backwards and downwards to help keep you up. A lot of people will float with their arms out to the side like this. While that does work, especially if you spread your legs apart too because of the surface area, you're still gonna find yourself sinking after a while. So I don't mind, I actually prefer to keep your arms closer to your body where they can be more effective as you paddle with your hands, okay? So the hands and the feet very lightly are redirecting water backwards and downwards, keeping your body up at the surface. The momentum that you're using by paddling and kicking is also keeping you up at the surface. So if you've ever struggled with sinking legs or just feeling like you just couldn't float at all in general and nothing ever worked for you, remember to keep your lungs full of air, remember to paddle lightly with your hands and kick lightly with your feet. The last part of floating on your back and helping you stay up is the head position. Your head is key when you're in the water. It's kind of like the steering wheel of a car. Wherever your head turns, your body follows. If you turn it to the left, you'll go to the left. If you turn it to the right, you'll go to the right. If you push it down, you'll go down. If you pick it up, your body will try to go up until gravity sucks you back under the water. So when you're on your back, you want your chin elevated a little bit. Tip your forehead back towards the water, and if a little bit of water trickles over your forehead, that's okay, that's a good thing. Watch very closely. I'm gonna put my chin down, and you'll watch my body sink. Okay? I'm gonna keep my chin up this time, and you'll watch my body float. Okay, your head being up like this is more like a front quadrant body position in the water, meaning we're balancing our body backwards a little bit. Because our legs are so heavy, we need our head to counterbalance the weight of our legs. So I'm tipping my head backwards, and like I said, if a little bit of water trickles over your forehead, that's okay. And once you get good at this, you might move into the streamline kicking, which is difficult because you might feel a little bit less balanced in the water, but theoretically, with your arms behind you, you're more balanced in the water. When your chin is up that high, you might feel upside down in the water. And that's okay, that's actually the feeling you're searching for. Because when you're on your back, it's the opposite of when you're on your belly. When you're on your belly, you wanna feel like you're swimming downhill. When you're on your back, you wanna feel like you're swimming downhill, but upside down, okay? So you might feel a little bit disoriented and it might take time getting used to, that's okay. Just keep pressing that chin up, keep the air in your lungs. Don't lift your head out of the water. As soon as you lift your head out of the water, because your head is the weight of a bowling ball, you will sink through the rest of your body. Watch me. It's not easy. I almost could keep it up, but it's definitely not easy. And unless you're a swimmer who, who, who swam for 17 years competitively, that will not be easy for you either. The last drill in this video is how to breathe, mostly in freestyle, but also in breaststroke. A lot of people have a hard time breathing to the side when they swim or breathing in front of them or in any way, shape or form, they struggle getting their air when they're in the water. Today, I'm gonna to teach you how to get that breath in each stroke and when you're swimming on your belly or floating on your belly. The most common mistake I see beginners make when trying to breathe in the water is they need more than one breath at a time without realizing they need more than one breath. That means they haven't learned or practiced how to space their air out so that they only need one sharp breath at a time any given time they lift their head out of the water. So that's what we're gonna learn first. We're not gonna learn how to breathe to the side just yet but we are gonna learn how to take one breath at a time. We'll start with a kickboard and needing two breaths and putting your face back down in the water and continuing to kick. You'll take two more breaths, face back down, and continue kicking. Once you're good at getting two breaths at a time, now you're gonna wanna do one breath. So, kick with your feet till you need a breath, lift your head, one breath, face back down. If you find yourself pausing your kick while you do this step,
that's okay, that's pretty common. Try to kick through your breaths while you do this step. That'll be very key for when we add in the arms because right now you're trying to do two things at once, get your breath and kick. When we add in the arms, that's three things. Now we're gonna learn the pineapple. The pineapple is how you get your breath on your back. Now we're gonna take a step back here and allow you to take more than one breath at a time again. So when you roll to your back to get your breath, it's okay to take two or three or four breaths here. Take as many as you need until you're comfortable and then roll back to your belly. Now, when you roll to your back for your pineapple, you're gonna take one breath and one breath only. Once you've got that good breath, roll back to your belly and keep swimming. Now when you roll onto your back, keep one arm extended behind you. With one arm extended behind you, you're gonna be able to get that breath quicker and continue swimming easier. It's also gonna keep your body balanced in the water. That front quadrant swimming is always what we're looking for to keep our body balanced. That'll help counteract any sort of sinking legs that you might be having. Now, instead of rolling all the way to your back, I only want you to roll onto your side. Keep one arm extended out front and roll onto your side here Take two breaths. Once you've mastered two breaths, roll to your side, take one breath. Exhale under the water and inhale to the side, cutting your breath time in half so that when your arm is coming over your head, you don't get any uninvited water over your face. When you breathe to the side on freestyle, Try not to lift your head up in the air or show me your ear because you're gonna sink your legs. It's best if you can keep your head on your arm, ear on your shoulder, and maybe one goggle in the water, one goggle out, maybe both eyes, but keeping your head down in the water like that is very key. You don't need to lift your head out of the water. In fact, I've, I've found that when people lift their head out of the water, sometimes they'll choke on water because your mouth is on your chin, not your forehead. So if you're lifting your forehead up, your chin's dropping. Rather, keep your forehead tilted down so your chin pops up. Last step for the freestyle breath is making sure you're getting your breath slightly behind you. Most people breathe in front of them or in front of them into the side. I much prefer you to breathe side and slightly behind you. Now, if you're not quite ready for the freestyle breath or you might find it a little too challenging, then start with the breaststroke breath. The breaststroke breath is easier for most because it's in front of you, which is more natural for humans. They want to see where they're going. They want to be breathing in front of them, not behind them. That's okay. If you're more comfortable with that, start there. It's also easier because you can take two breaths at a time if you need to, without panicking. And once you've gotten good at that, blow your air out underwater, breathe once in above the water, and you'll feel really, really smooth. The only drawback to the breaststroke breath is that you're lifting your head up out of the water. That is going to sink your legs. So unless you are a strong breaststroke kicker or just a confident swimmer, you might find the breaststroke breath difficult as well but I still recommend you try it. Once you've got your air, put your head back down below the water and below your arms to let your body rise back to the surface. Thanks for watching this video. If you appreciate it, splash that like button, subscribe to the channel and follow us over on our other social media channels for more content throughout the week.